That is fabulous. Male nurses, vision, comfort, values, and beliefs. Thank God it's fabulous. What is cancer? What is your perception of cancer? Well, today our guest will be sharing her story on living with cancer. Thank God it's fabulous. Friendship. What is a true friend? He's my friend. She's my friend. Can a male and a female be true friends? What are the benefits of friendship? Are there true friends with benefits or not? How do you know somebody is a friend? What are the criteria? What are the requirements to have a friend? Thank God, God it's fabulous. Well, today we are going to be talking about career choices. Do you make career choices based on your habits or things you love or what's trending? Or what would be your livelihood? Is it going to be vocational? Or is it going to be higher education? What's your choice? what you're going through or what you have been through thank god it's fabulous i'm welda paley and i'm fasia hilton welcome thank god it's fabulous male nurses vision comfort values and beliefs thank god it's fabulous what is cancer what is your perception of cancer? Well, today our guest will be sharing her story on living with cancer. Thank God it's fabulous. Friendship. What is a true friend? He's my friend. She's my friend. Can a male and a female be true friends? What are the benefits of friendship? Are there true friends with benefits or not? How do you know somebody is a friend? What are the criteria? What are the requirements to have a friend? Thank God, God it's, it's fabulous. fabulous. Well, today we are going to be talking about career choices. Do you make career choices based on your habits or things you love or what's trending or what would be your livelihood? Is it going to be vocational or is it going to be higher education? What's your choice?
Good evening, good evening, good evening. Thank God, God is fabulous. fabulous. Welcome to another presentation of Thank God is Fabulous. Yes, today is a beautiful day. And yes, it is. And the weather is nice in Indianapolis. Such an interesting and controversial and hot topic today. Yes. Whew. Today we're going to be talking about sex. And this is just the starting of it all because it's not just one understanding today. We're going to look at it in all its entirety. The first thing we're going to talk about today is God's plan for sex. Hmm. So hopefully we are all in line with the plan. <laughs> Well, now you know, yeah. like we're going to see most of us are not in, in line with the plan. So we're going to see if we're in That's line with the plan to today. Right now. Forgive us, Father, for we have seen. I'm going Catholic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing my Catholic confession. Linda, you are so welcome. Linda says she knows she is trouble now. <laughs> Well, you know, a lot of people gonna be in trouble today. Okay. But well, let's that's that's why today we got we're gonna get the understanding of this uh um sex because for a very long time we've been enjoying ourselves, but today we're gonna find out all the little intricate details about you know what this sex is all about. Are we on the right path? Are we doing the right one? And so forth. So I got, I will have two pastors in our midst today to bring a lot of clarification on the biblical side of a God's intention for sex. So it is, it's going to be fun. So we're looking forward to see that. Yeah. Okay, I will, I will resend it to you. I will send you the invite. So it's like, wow, what are we doing? So at the end of the day, <laughs> it's going to be serious because if all the things you've been doing around here, it was not in the old man's plan, mm, we're just going to find out it today. And you know, I love him because he is a forgiving God. Yes, he is. So <laughs> if we ain't been doing it right, he's going to just fix us and let us do it right. So that's the whole idea. He will fix us. And then we would do it right going forward. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we have, we, this is going to be a four part series. Um, we thought it wise that we shouldn't just come and just, it's such a broad topic. Yeah. That we thought it wise to, to divide it into four segments. So this first segment is God's intention for sex. We have to go the, the biblical route first. And then the second series, which will be next week, will be human understanding for sex as God intended. And then part three will be the man's interpretation of sex. And obviously part four will be the woman's interpretation of sex. No, no, and no, then maybe the we one. might do a part five and have... You know, all of them combined, and then we can have one one broad topic. Yes. But this is this is going to be a, a hot topic, and we have two okay, close that one out recently. Um, diverse or reading your message. Two two female pastors that have come in to help us dive into this on the biblical aspect of it. So we can <laughs> we can share some light up in here today. But you know, I hope you got your questions ready because whatever doubt you have in your mind, things that you never understood about, because I'm telling you, there's a whole lot of things out there. When you, you don't understand what exactly it is, it's easy to make a mistake. Yes. So we, we, we're going to let them come and clarify for us today. Okay, so... We will be waiting for them to come into studio so that they can help us understand it. But meanwhile, let, 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 let's talk about this sex thing. Hmm. 
Hmm. Because you know what somebody told me? And it kind of make a lot of sense too. Adam and Eve were the two people God created. Yes. And that Adam, the whole time he was there trying to name the animals all day long. He was not paying attention to Eve. That why Eve went and followed that snake. You know what I'm saying? They, they started a troll. Well, you know, yes, that, that, yeah. You were not paying her attention. It makes sense. And so at the end of the need, day, we need the attention. We need the attention. So at the end of the day, she like, you know what? I'm just gonna go deal with this boy that just keep bothering me. So she went to the snake. But today that had all the trouble started. Exactly. You see, who was supposed to be enjoying the garden or eating, but I, Adam, Adam. How many times did I call your name? It is always the man's fault. Yes. Always. Adam. Adam, listen, no, I'm Adam. calling your name. You are the reason we are here, making all this trouble for us. Now the whole plan and purpose, you when a chill all day, you just name me animal. You can't decide if you want goat to be called goat or goat to be called sheep. You took too long, and then the snake was there disturbing this woman, and she couldn't help herself. I'm telling you. So she, uh, she was just curious. A hint to the wise for the men. <laughs> Pay attention to us. <laughs> we need attention more than money. We do. We need the attention. Pay attention. If pay you don't pay attention, attention to us, it could be found somewhere else. <laughs> not that a disclaimer. We are not condoning that, but we are just saying that you have to pay attention to. <laughs> Please to your pay woman. attention to us. Yes. Okay. Yes. Because you know. But yeah, so we got our first uh, guest in studio right now. And we'll just keep her in there until her other hosts join her. Meanwhile, we'll put in our questions down because all of us have some disparities, things we want to clarify, things we want to understand, you know. And this show is here to shed light. So today we get to understand. And let me make it clear, disclaimer, this show is not to fault you in any way, shape, no. or form. We're here to learn. So as we learn, we understand, then we can go forward and do what is right. Because you know why? Our God is an awesome God. He is. he is a forgiving God. So the things that we've they've been telling us a long time, if we didn't catch the ad, today we got another chance to understand exactly what we're supposed to be doing with this sex. Because I'm telling you anymore, sex has become <laughs> valueless. And I do not think that was the plan God intended for it. No, it is. Because it's... everything God does, he has a purpose. But yeah. man, oh, we've changed our mind about this purpose from God. So at the end of the day, we're doing our own thing. And we know we're in the plan of God. You know how you see a man, you like the man, and you even pray about it. But you decide that the man you want. Then you say, God, yes, the man I want to marry. You don't say, Papa God, is please. Is this the right person for is me? Is this the right person? No, you even to that's, send somebody in the first place. Wrong. You that's where we go wrong. That's where we go wrong. Send somebody exactly. in the first place. Yes. And you know, sex, sex is a good thing. You know, but when when you do a good thing in a bad way, it becomes a bad thing. Okay. And a disclaimer again: we are not condoning that. You know, if you're young and and to go and just no, but we we are just here to shed light on it. And just to, to open our minds and, and to get educated. So she's using her phone, but she is not able to get in. This is why it's still not. She has to download um, StreamYard. But we can bring the other guest on. Okay, good for now. Yeah, sorry about Wait, that. Wait, let me, let me get her on the line. Okay. Yeah. All right, so... Like we said, get your, your questions ready. We um, be open about it and ask whatever questions you want to be you want to ask or you want to know about. Just let us just um, try to be a little bit discreet when we are describing or asking our questions. You know, let us let us use our words Ooh. wisely. All right. So at this time. I'll go ahead and bring in our first uh, guest tonight while our other guests will be on the phone because 
Pastor V, welcome. We understand that we're not able to get you on screen, but you are now on live. Okay. All right. So that we have you in studio, we'll go ahead and bring on our next guest so both of you can be in studio. Welcome, 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 Pastor Esther. You're so you. welcome in studio. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right. Yeah. And we also have Pastor V. She's on the phone, okay. so she's into the conversation too. Pastor V, can you hear us on the show also? Yes, I can hear you guys. Okay, good. So please, today our question is, please clarify, please tell us, God intention for sex. Well, before we before we go there, let us mm. let us have them introduce. Oh, introduce yes, yes, viewers. and tell us your churches so that because we know a lot of people might want to follow you too. Pastor Esther, we'll go with you first. All right. Uh, my name is Esther Moike, and I'm joining all the way from Florida, Tampa, Florida. Yeah. Uh, I have a church and I have a a women ministry, international ministry. The name of my church is uh, Tabernacle of Divine Glory Ministry. We are based here in Tampa. Mm -hmm. And for the women of substance, it's worldwide. Uh, we are in Africa, we are in, uh, in Asia, and uh, we are in Europe. So we are moving on. We're also in the United States. Okay. So and I'm glad to be here tonight. Amen. Thank you Amen. so much. We appreciate you. Pastor Veronica? Yes, my name is uh, Pastor Veronica Pan. I'm located in uh, Columbus, Ohio, and um, the name of the church is El Shaddai Praise Tabernacle. Uh, we are located in the U.S., and it's a blessing to be able to join you all um, this evening. God bless you all. Thank you so much, Pastor V. So let's go right into it because we have a lot of viewers on tonight because this topic is a very sensitive one. It's a highly spiritual one, and it's a very social one. So all around, this topic is our livelihood. So tonight, we really want to understand a lot of things about it that we've been doing wrong about it. So Pastor uh, Esther, we'll just start with you. Please tell us, for clarification, what is God's intention for sex? Before we talk about God's intention for sex, you mean in the general view or in what area? Particularly when you read the Bible, what is this? What, what was God trying to do here when he threw sex in this thing? Well, God's intention for sex mm -hmm. is for a man and a woman to have pleasure as a married couple, and also to make babies. Okay. That is Pleasure God's intention for sex. Okay. Because in every man, in every woman, God created that part which we call in the science world hormones, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And these hormones trigger some, you know, some things in your body that you want to lie with a man or you want to lie with a woman. Yeah. And God's intention is that sex should be a holy thing. I put it that way. Mm -hmm. And it's supposed to be between a married man and a married woman. Because when God created Adam in the garden, he made them Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve. God did not make them uh, uh, Adam and... Oh, yeah, uh, Pastor Power is on. And uh, Adamus. He made them Adam and Eve. So that is God's intention for sex. All right. All right. Thank you, Pastor Esther. Pastor V, the same question comes to you. Help us understand what God's intention for sex is. Volume. Volume. She muted. You are muted. You are muted. Mm. 
So go on your screen, your little arrow thing that there with the curve. If it has a line, press it. You, you did it before. Press it again so it can open up. Or the mic. Your mic. Your mic is muted. Maybe she has to log out and log in again. And no, when she came on, it, it was she had a muted on it. Oh, so she just have to go on it and click. Now, but maybe she needs to go off and come back in. Okay, you want to go off and come back in? Okay, so we will we can continue with with um pastor e pastor v you can hear me right or maybe she can come back on the phone yeah she has to go back log in and you know uh click log in with the with the microphone then it will come on okay There you go. Okay, you want to come off and then log back in again. Okay, I'm going to do it right now. Bye. Okay. All right, so you, Pastor Esther, you just said sex as God intended is for pleasure and for making babies. Mm -hmm. He said go and multiply. multiply. Mm -hmm. So that's what. So when you multiply, you make baby because Adam had to knew the wife and she conceived adam knew the wife and she conceived so that word new right is uh -huh. the old uh hebrew word meaning sex so sex is between a man and the wife so okay you, now yeah, because that, we're, that, we're that, that just got really deep <laughs> we're, we're diving now so the biblical side says between a man and a woman. That's right. Okay. But now you know in the world we have we have immoralities, we have we have sexual perversions. Absolutely. Okay. So what what would you say in this in this in this world of, of, of immoralities and, and sexual perversions when it comes to the opposite sex being with the, the, the same sex. What is your take on that? Oppo, just call it, child. I, I'm very wrong. Just okay. so the, the man, yeah, go wrong. Go wrong. Yes, a man being with a man or a woman being with Absolutely. a woman. Absolutely, that's it. Just go wrong. Now, we have scriptures. Not and your your volume is a little low. Is it us or is it, is it you? That may be you. I mean, okay. we're hearing you. Yeah, my Can the God. viewers hear her clearly, loudly? Yeah, he says he say it's loud. Okay, you okay go ahead. Class? Okay, now, having sex with the opposite uh, uh, partner is not God's intention. Whether it be from the Old Testament mm -hmm. or be from the New Testament, okay. the bed should be on the fire. Even God laid a curse that nobody is allowed to sleep with opposite direction, man with man, or woman with woman, or or a man sleeping with a beast, or a woman sleeping with a beast. If that is what God wants, in the garden, God should have created uh, uh, Stephen and Stephen. But God created Adam and Eve. Yes. So, hmm. having sex with the opposite uh, 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 person is not God's intention for sex. But before I come back, this question is for you, Pastor Esther. But before I come back to you, Pastor Veronica, can we hear you on the first question? God's intention for sex. Yes, can you hear me? Loud and okay. clear. Yes. Yeah, um, just to kind of add to what the woman of God stated. Um, number one, when God created Adam, he said that this man needs a help, something is missing. 
And in Genesis chapter one, the Bible speaks about multiplication and replenishing the earth. So therefore for God to be able to multiply and replenish the earth or bring more individuals, he needed a man and a woman to come together. So that was his original purpose for even bringing Eve into the picture. Uh, besides that aspect, as we're speaking about um, God's intention for sex, um, as the woman of God stated from the New Testament to the Old Testament, God has given all of us a choice, but it doesn't mean that God does not have his will. So there are times that God has already detailed, if we want to go by scriptures, God has already detailed his will. But then with everything else that God creates, sometimes we have our own will. So when it comes to sex, the original intention for God based upon not Veronica or Esther or anybody else, but based on the original purpose of God was a man and a woman. That is his will. But as human beings, as we all know, with everything, with everything God has created, we all have our own will. Absolutely. So sometimes our own will may not be exactly in alignment with what the scripture has stated. And sometimes our own will, in our mind, this is the right thing for me to do, or this is what I desire for my sexual needs. Mm -hmm. So that's what we have. There are times we have woman and woman sleeping together. You have man and man sleeping together. You even have beasts. Mm. You even have people that sleep with animals. Mm -hmm. So exactly. those are their personal will. Mm -hmm. But God's original desire was a man and a woman. But yeah. it's up to us to either fulfill that desire or sometimes we go in the opposite direction but based on his will it was a man and a woman god bless you thank you if i may support that pastor veronica if you look at the book of leviticus 20 verse 13 it says if a man also lie with mankind as he lied with a woman both of them have committed an abomination they shall surely be put to death their blood shall be upon them. Now that is even in the Old Testament. It is never permitted. And we saw the case of uh, uh, the case of Lot. You remember the case yes. of Lot? The fact that they were sodomites. He lives in the midst of sodomites. Look at what God did to Sodom and Gomorrah. And Christ himself tells you that any nation that will live after the pattern of Sodom and Gomorrah shall likewise be destroyed. Even Paul came to the book of 1 Corinthians, you know, chapter 6 in verse 9. He said, know you know that the righteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? He said, be not deceived, neither fornication nor idolaters, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Abusers, I'm portraying that word, abusers of themselves with mankind. None of them will make the kingdom of God. Like Pastor Veronica said, of course, God created us with three three things he made us have will sensibility and 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 intent so it is your choice and your choice determines who you are your choice either makes you or break you and like she said the will of god christ said depart from me i never knew thee why because they work against the will of god thank you mm. So there is a question coming from uh, Linda on uh, Facebook. She said, when people's DNA is the opposite of their genitalia, how does that work? When people's DNA? Uh, yes. How, 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 I, don't, I don't understand. So you are female, but you have Hello? two organs. I, I'm not really understanding where she's going with that. Linda, can you elaborate on your question? She, 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 at the beginning, she said, in the scripture, it says not to be with seeing sex. We still have to be loving people, though. She said, my question is, when people's DNA is the opposite of their genitalia, so you so have I guess, one organ. So I guess if I'm a female, this is how I'm understanding it. Mm -hmm. If I'm a female, mm. right, I have female parts. But I have a feeling like I'm a man. A man, yes. Well, it, 
Pastor Veronica, maybe you, because I have an answer, but maybe Pastor Veronica, please go ahead. Pastor V? Okay, that's a very good question. And I like what, um, I think she stated that something about love, I believe yes. in her question. I believe strongly that it is not the will of God for us to bash um, anyone that is the same sex. It is not the will of God for us to um, isolate them. It is not the will of God for us to like paint them in a certain category because okay. all of us are sinners. All of us have yes. our own struggles. So I'm, I'm one firm believer that whether you're gay, whether you're lesbian, whether you're straight, you're bisexual, I still believe that Christ loved all of us and we should all treat everyone the same. Now, as we speak about God's original intention, yes, God, you know, I, you know, I'm, I'm one person that I always like to hit the spiritual realm. Yes. A lot of times, you know, and, and this may not make sense to a lot of people, but the same way when God creates things, the Bible says that with everything God created, it, he looked at it and said, said it was, it was good. good. Mm -hmm. God would never make any anything that is, is, is questionable. God would not make something where you're struggling. Is it a man? Is it a woman? Is it a boy? Is it a girl? But we have the systems of God. We have science. We also have a spiritual world that the natural man cannot understand. So yes, even me that works in the medical field, we have had patients where it's a female, but maybe she has a male part or it's a male, but, that, but they have a, a female's part or it's a woman, but she has feeling as a man. But a lot of times when you really um, do a research on these individuals, sometimes you realize that they were born as a woman, but sometimes something transpired in their life. Something happened to them, maybe as a child, something took place and then something shifted in their sexual desires. So mm -hmm. that question is, is, is a lot of reasons that can cause somebody to, you're born as a female, but you feel like a man. And yes, you're gonna have science, hear this. We have scientists, we have you know evidence in the medical field that is gonna tell you it's because of this, it's because of that. This is why you feel like this. But again, as believers, as believers, God will not make something there is confusing. So when you find someone in that situation, there is some there is a deeper problem that is taking place and i don't know if we have all the time to really cover that particular question because that particular question covers so many aspects there are so many reasons why this will occur and even in a situation like that the person sometimes struggles between being a female or a male but me personally me personally i don't believe that god if God stated that he made a male and a female, mm -hmm. then why would God make a woman that has a, a, a female but has a male part? <laughs> or why would God have a female and she has the desire to be a man? So there's other things that are that are connected to that particular feeling that we may not have time to cover, but I think you need to do a second part on that particular question for us to like dive deeper into what she's asking. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. I have an answer for that based okay. on the word of God. The reason why today a man will, will want to change his sex to a woman, a woman want to change her sex to a man. If, if, if you have your Bible, the woman that asked the question, open to me the book of Romans chapter one. You see, there's nothing that is transpiring that, I, that is not written in the word of God. And mm. I basically based my teachings and everything in the word of God. Yes, it is true. We are, we are not to hate anybody. Yes, it is true. We are not to, to, to cast everybody away. You see, casting away, hating is none of my business. My business is whether you are gay or you are not, my, as long as God led you to me, that means God wants to change you. Now, if you go to the book of Romans chapter one, this is the reason why we are having all this in the world from verse 21. I'm going to read from verse 21 down to verse 27. I will read it so quickly. Because that when they knew God, they glorify him not as God. I'm reading Romans chapter 1, verse 21 down to verse 27. Because that when they knew God, they glorify him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain 
in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed, in verse 23, and they changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like corruptible, man to birds, and four-footed beasts, which means they began to worship idols and creeping things. Wherefore, now this is when now God's anger came. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the loss of their own heart to dishonor their own body. Look at how it came. To dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Oh, because wow. When God created you in the garden. He never created you to start having an affection for your, for your, same, for your same sex. But the reason why God made it so, look at it in verse 24. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the loss of their own heart, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship who is blessed forever for this cause. God gave them up unto vile affection. We see that word, vile yes. affection for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. How? And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, born in their own loss, one towards another man. Why men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their own error, which was met. Now, if you read down just for the sake of time, you will see why God gave them to and make them a reprobate. There's a reason. You were not born with the desire, oh, you know, I, I grow up, you know, I'm going to start desiring my female. Listen, it's because when we deviate from God, you may not have an idol you are worshiping, but mm -hmm. what is it that takes the greatest part of your life away from God? And if you be a child of God, God says then he will give them the vile affections. So, the cause costless shall not come, like Solomon said. The cause costless, mm -hmm. there's a cause. So it's right there. So if I see somebody burning, right, towards the same sex, I just go back. If the person comes to me and say, now you look at this, where have you heard? Go back because there is nothing God cannot do. God is a forgiving God. Go back, make your, go back to your penthouse. You came down from your, go back to your penthouse. And you see, God will take this desire. Because remember, he said, I am the Lord. Isaiah 45, 17. I created good and I created evil, evil like Pastor Veronica yeah. said. That there's a reason, right? Yes. God is in control. Now, but we need to go back and search ourselves. Where have I gotten it wrong? So where God now begin to put the desire? Or where has my forefather? Remember now? Four yes. fathers have gotten it wrong to yes. where this desire is coming. Because so that's true. why God will give them over to a vile affection. Man lusting after man, the Bible says, and woman lusting after woman. If you read that, you will see where it says, even some of them sleeping with beasts. There's a reason. So, Linda, I hope this really put a lot of light on your question because from our understanding is when you this Roman 21, 28 really opens up a lot of things. Yes, so because when, when a child is born, a child don't just decide, oh, I'm a baby now and I want to be a, a boy baby where I is a girl baby. But as time go by and their minds are not renewed to the things of God, then it can change. And that's when this Roman 1, 21, 28 comes in and tell you, you need to go back and see where you made this error. Mm -hmm. That giving you all these feelings coming forward. Oh, that was deep. That was deep. That was deep. So let's dive into another question that, that has a lot of different answers, biblically. Um, when it comes to, to fasting and a husband and, mm. and, and, and wife. One pastor might say, if you're fasting, then you and your, your husband should not have sex. Another pastor would say, if you're fasting and you discuss it with your husband and he agrees, you know, because you guys are one, you have to still have sex when you break your fast. Can you, can, can both of you shed light on that? Pastor V, do you want to go first? That's um, fine. Yeah. You see, I'll, I, I'll use this example because I think sometimes we, 
we bring unnecessary warfare into our homes. Mm -hmm. God is not an author of confusion in any marriage or in any not home. Not at all. Yeah. First Corinthians chapter seven. Yes. First Corinthians chapter seven and verses um five. It says, "Defraud you not one another, one another, except it be with consent for right. a time, That's right. that ye may give yourself to fasting and prayer, and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your in, your inconsistency." But the Bible says, for example, as a husband and wife. Before you decide to go on a fast, maybe it's a three days, a seven days, a long fast. I would say maybe seven, 14, 21, 40 days, however it may be. The Bible says before you decide to go on a fast, if you're married, you're supposed to sit and discuss this with your spouse. That's right. Number two, you have to ask yourself, are you and your spouse on the same level spiritually? That's right. Because if you are on fire for God, yeah, and your spouse is still a baby Christian. Your spouse is still struggling, hmm. but God has given you a desire to fast about something. Let's say you're on a 21 days of fasting, and you're fasting, and your husband or your wife, they're a baby Christian. They're not. They're not as spiritually strong as you, and uh, they have the urge. They want to, you know, have make love with you as their spouse. I don't believe, like I said, based upon the word of God, that's why I say a lot of times we are destroying our homes because we are we, we are putting things in system that is not is not totally there. So if you are fasting as a Christian woman, for example, and you are seeking the face of God, and your husband is not spiritually strong, and your husband say, honey. I know we, we agree to, to not have sex or whatever, but, you know, I, I really need to make love to you. If you decide to make love to your husband, God is not going to strike you dead. God, it doesn't mean that God will not answer your prayer. Mm -hmm. That is why before you engage in any spiritual activity, you, you need to also pray and commit your spouse into the hands of God. That whatever conviction God has given to you, that God will also impress that on your spouse. And maybe your, your spouse will be able to understand, okay, my wife or my husband, they are on a long fast, you know, as they're seeking the face of God, this is the time for me to also do something. But as I stated, if your spouse is not there yet, if your spouse is not spiritually there yet, deny your spouse of sex. Because you're fasting based upon the word and they're not there yet. It's not too wise. But every marriage and every home is different. And even if you have sex with your spouse during your fasting, you are not having sex 24 hours. <laughs> so even after you have had sex with your spouse, simply go take your shower, do whatever you need to do. You know, get into your prayer room, get into the place of worship. It's not going to stop God from moving. But once again, Hallelujah. it depends on the spiritual level of your spouse. Yes, it's a beautiful thing when both their husband and wife are spiritually there and they have agreed for the next 21 days, the next 40 days, the next 14 days, there is no sex. We are seeking God. We are interceding. It is a beautiful thing. But you have some couples that are not there yet. It takes prayer, wisdom, and Holy Spirit to guide you in that particular area. God bless you. Mm, Pastor Ferrica, wow. you, you lay you this one laid out. Down. You lay it out. Woo we yes, that and... dad was like, mm. yeah. I like the fact that she said, you know, are you and your spouse on the same spiritual level? Hmm. You know, we don't think about that. No, we That's pray right. for him. Because if you have one person <laughs> in kindergarten and you have one person in fourth grade, yeah. there is a big difference. There's a big gap. Yeah. Oh, Pastor Esther, let's hear from you. As a matter of fact, uh, thank you so much, Pastor Victoria. Like you were in my mind. I will just chip in to what you said because I'm in total agreement. And that's what where I stand. You know, you brought out a very beautiful point. But Paul says, if you that is spiritual, right? You mm -hmm. decide to marry a non-believer. That's right. And you decide to do hell with them. Where you have to, but you should realize that's right. There is a consequence. 
Yeah. Now, the consequence is just what Pastor Veronica said. You are on grade 10. And mm -hmm. here is this man. He's been even in kindergarten. Yeah. And now, your pastor, listen to me, because mm -hmm. we pastors, we need to also know what God is asking us to do. Yes. Because yes. he said, I will not give you more than you can bear. We pastors, right? We know that 80% uh, of our congregants are women and their husband is not in church. Listen. And now you are declaring 60 days fasting, 100 <laughs> days fasting. The question I ask is, what happened, pastor? Did they kill Jesus? <laughs> <laughs> they the one that killed. No, let, uh, because we have to be, we have, this is, this is uh, uh, a moment of truth. Yes. yes. If you have people, at least a man can still say three days, you know, can still endure three days. And my prayer daily is, like I tell myself, any problem that my three days fasting cannot solve, God, please don't bring it my way. <laughs> Father, please. Because I don't care how a man could stay. A woman can stay years, but not a man. That is so that true. Is how God made it. So when you are declaring 40 days fasting, why? So that you are a local champion, what? Okay, you finished declaring 40 days fasting, 100 days fasting. I still didn't see changes. So, I mean, why many homes have been ruined yes. because the woman said, No, the pastor said I should go on 21 days fasting. That's you correct. Yes. Okay, you are going on 21 days fasting. Your husband said, Okay, I can't do it. Your husband is, is suffering. He's suffering. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now, the man now went outside. That's correct. Now That's you are correct. Crying. Oh, my husband is yeah. fighting. My yeah. is committing adultery. Listen to me. That's correct. In the reality, God is going to hold you woman accountable. But that God is correct. Wow. God that is correct. Asks you to fast. Because yeah. remember, fasting is between man and God. That's it. But fasting is not about man and man. It's mm -hmm. between you man and you God. And that's why Christ said, when you fast, you know, in the book of Matthew uh, 6, verse 17 to 18, he said, but when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face that your fasting may not be seen by others but by your father who is in secret why because the fasting is between man and god if it's between man and man then christ will tell you okay you know when you fast you know like people will fast they will, they'll be making us oh we are doing 21 days fasting let me tell you that fasting is not the fasting god god wants because the fasting should be secret between man and god not between man and man and again Based on what she said, she, in fact, she quoted my scripture, but a Paul admonishing us, you know, for a season, he never said do 40 days, 100 days fasting. He said for a season. I mean, look at that statement. It, because even Brad Paul also knew that if he go too long, the devil, is that not what he said? He said, deprave each, he, he said, defraud, defraud each other. Each other yep. Except by a mutual a season. Mm -hmm. For a time, so that they may devote yourself to prayer. Then yeah. come together again so that Satan doesn't enter. Will not enter. You want to blame the man while you are fasting. You that's you right. A righteous, super righteous woman. And then you want to blame the man while you are fasting. Go to another room and begin to watch pornography. You are the cause, my friend. That's correct. So if you and your husband come together, honey, let's do three days fasting. That three days is three days. And Daniel, you all remember the story of Daniel. When he saw that 70 years is passed in captivity in Babylon, 70 years is passed, he now decided to go on 21 days. But the Bible said, at the third day, the angel Gabriel was coming with an answer. You know what that tells me? That means on the third day, my answer should come. Yes. God is not deaf that he cannot hmm. hear. Neither is God blind that he cannot see. He sees your heart. I'm also fasting, remember, is your intention. It's intention of the heart. Not yeah. of the body. And when Israel said, oh, we have to do this fasting, long fasting. Look at what God told them in the book of Isaiah. I mean, we also in Isaiah 58. He said, you cry loud. Uh, do not hold back. You shout, oh, hallelujah. But you are doing your pleasure, not the pleasure of God. So I right. wish we pastors, you see, I'm not saying, we pastors, you know, we super, we call ourselves super holy. We lay the body. We become Pharisees that will lay the burden on the people in Matthew 20, but yet we will go behind and be having sex with our wives and be having sex with our husband. But why do they lay the burden on the people? 
if you are declaring a three days, let it be a three days. And for you woman, or for you man, you know, that you know your husband is not in, 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 in the ministry with you. You have to please. And if your husband says, like Pastor Veronica said, I agree totally. If your husband says, no, I will only let you do three days. To me, accept that three days because you will watch how God will bless you more than for you to want to show that you are radical. You want to show you are radical for Christ. Listen, God is not going to bless that, that prayer. You know what? You just disobey the head of the woman. So obey the head of the woman. If you are fasting 21 days and your husband says, no, I can't take it again. We have done 14 days. I've tried. If I were you, stop it. That does not mean God have not answered your prayer. And have you have also forgotten? He said, the, the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. And as a neighbor, God right does right. it. Supposing God has done his heart to let you know that 14 days is enough. Don't go again and answer you. But no, you know, we want to do super holy. Our super holy is not going to help us. So thank you, Pastor Veronica. I'm just in line with you. Thank you. So uh, one of our viewers asking that she's really enjoying the conversation, but she's having difficulty following when we speak fast. She can't pick up all the words in the sentence. So she's struggling right now. She's enjoying this thing. She wants to catch everything. So she's asking if you can slow down a little bit so she can understand every word that's coming out of your mouth. Okay, so all right. Here's another time time taking question that you know it is it is like taboo in the church. And that is the 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 question about oral sex. Mm -hmm. Is it permissible? Is it biblical? Where did this come from? Should I? Yeah. Both. Okay. okay. I would say, I would say like this. There is no scripture in this Bible that speaks about oral sex. Okay. Okay. There is no scripture that you would say God said oral sex. What I would say is that when it comes to sex, the husband and the wife, and it goes back to what I stated earlier at the beginning that God has his will. But each of us as human beings have our own will, our own appetites, our own desires, our own experiments. So there is no scripture that states that God said oral sex is something permitted by him. But as human beings, we have certain desires, certain things we want to try, certain things we want to maybe engage in and see how it works. And there are times people engage into the oral sex, both the, the, the female to the husband and the husband to the male. It happens. But according to scriptures, there is no, there, the God is not saying that he says oral sex is something that he has is written in the Bible. But as human beings, sometimes our own desires our own lust, our own appetites, our own sexual needs. Or sometimes you hear people say they want to spice things up. Mm -hmm. They begin to engage in different sexual things. Um, countless of sexual things, couples engage in the bedroom. But what I want to say is this. Ask yourself, whatever sexual activities, because the bedroom, it is only you, God, and your spouse. That's right. So whatever sexual activities that is taking place in your matrimonial bedroom, do you believe that this is something that is acceptable? Because we are not watching you in that bedroom. It is only you. So do you believe that whatever you are doing in that bedroom, even there are times people bring threesome. <laughs> there are couples, they will, bring, they will bring a third party because they, they want to maybe do a game. They want to please their husband. But remember, whenever you open the door for the enemy, because I hear this all the time, oh, I wanted to, I wanted to spice things up in my home, so I brought a, a lady. Then what happens? After you and your husband happen to sleep with that lady, then what happens next? Your husband begin to go behind your back mm -hmm. and begin to have sex with the woman behind your back. So a lot of these things we are doing, and I want to also hit this mark because it also comes with oral sex, masturbation, masturbation. You know, I've, I've dealt with a lot of people. And one thing about masturbation, 
before you can masturbate, whether you're a female or a male, you have to get yourself to a certain place. Yes. Whether by watching pornos, whether by watching some kind of a sexual videos, you have to be able to arouse yourself. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to do things to yourself to get yourself to that realm. Yes. So all these things at times, they can become a stronghold. And even women, you know, women do it at a time. You go to the store. They are different size of, they call it dildo. I don't know any other name besides dildo, which is fake penis. There are different types of, of, of penis in the store. Now, when a woman becomes addicted to these different sizes of dildos, and now you get married, and the size of your husband does not match the size of that thing. It can cause, a, a, it can cause a serious problem oh, yes in your marriage yes. so That's true. once again whether they're all sex whether it's masturbation whether it's a uh, 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 bringing third party in ask yourself this door i'm opening is it gonna benefit me or not that's my little take on it god bless you Ooh. Pastor v, you're tearing Ooh. this platform down yes but you know what? People really need to hear they, this they because do. a lot of times we end up criticizing ourselves or we're criticizing other people and trying to add up be like somebody else for which nobody and you in your race. You yeah. in your race by yourself. Exactly. Or if, if one partner does not want to feel comfortable, but they feel pressure in yes. doing it because then yes. the other partner feels like you're a mule or, or you don't want to, to, to adventure in you're things. Old -fashioned. You're old-fashioned. Oh, fashion, yes. Oh, oh, Mama Esther, let's hear your take on this. Because, All right, ooh. hallelujah! Hallelujah, it's becoming very, very interesting. Yes, now if you look at the book of Genesis, chapter 26, in verse 8, Genesis 26, in verse 8, uh, the King James says, And it came to pass when he had been there a long time that. Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked out at the window and saw, and behold, Isaac was sporting with Rebekah, his wife. Look at that, was sporting. Now, in the NIV, NIV said that was sporting, caressing. Like Pastor Veronica said, you see, the bed is on the fire. Whatever you do as a couple in your bedroom is between you and and your husband. It is true, people have asked many questions. Uh, oral sex, you know, is it permissible? Now, if your husband decides to lick you, listen, you the wife, or you decide to lick your husband, that is two of you desiring pleasure, right? Among yeah. yourself. But yeah. when it comes to the fact that you have to have threesome, then you are looking for the wrath of God. Because Abimelech, right? Spotted Isaac and and uh, Rebecca caressing in the field. And what is caressing? Maybe he's fingering her. Maybe he's rubbing her breast. You see, the Bible did not go to what extent of caressing or spotting they were doing in the field. To where Abimelech now began, if you read the rest of the story, became angry that Isaac lied to him that Rebecca was his wife. So, but I'm particular about that word caressing. I don't have a problem if you are married and you and your husband, you are caressing. Okay, what is it? Please, please can somebody help me out here? What is the difference between the man is fingering you and the man is using the tongue? Okay, I, I, I don't know, maybe I'm the one not getting it, right? I don't know what is the difference because some will say, oh, no, you know, he fingered. I said, but he fingered. He used his tongue. He used his hand. I don't see any difference. The only thing I see, like she said, is before you get married, make sure that you are not into all this stuff. They call it sex toys. And then you go and get the one that is very large. Now God gave you a man with a small thing. So what are you going to do? Are you going to use the man pennies and the thing together? Listen, I don't know how it's going to work. <laughs> no, but it's the truth. It's, it's, it's the truth. It's, it's the truth. truth. Because if you look at 
I, I have a program. We used to have a yeah. program called Family Forum. And yeah. we try to help people, especially those that are diabetic or with high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. You know, at a point in their age, right? Yeah, they can have sex. Goes down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't believe in using Viagra because one day you will, the man will die on top of the woman, you know, because of Viagra. <laughs> but, but there is this book by this uh, uh, sex uh, uh, professor. And the book says how you can help your man hmm. and how the man can help the woman. Even at 60, they are not able to have sex. You see, that is why this, what do you call it? The wisdom to get these toys came. Because he said, hmm. God says he will give me wisdom. It is God that gave me wisdom to build aeroplane. It is God, God that gave me wisdom to build the car. Now, if God gave men, he said, all things are lawful, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful, but you are not to be brought under the control of any. Now, when we that are youngly married or not married begin to use these sex toys that is meant for those that are sick, then that is when I said the reverse is the case. It is the young ones using it that are not sick, not even the people that actually need it. Because the sex toy is to help that man who is not able to arouse, right? It's for the woman to help the man to get to the position. And also for the man to help the woman to get to the position. That is what it's meant for. It's not meant for you single. If indeed you are single and your heart is for God, why should you begin to use the toy? You don't need the toy. Because the toy will break you. It will not make you. Leave the toy for the old people that is meant for. <laughs> Not for you, the young one. Keep yourself. He said, keep your virginity, you know, so that the right man will come for you. And whatever size it is, are you getting me? Your Gigi can accept it. But if you have already gone to damage your Gigi with the sex toy greater or bigger than the size God is going to give you, then there's a problem. Yep. So I agree with you, Pastor Veronica. Sex should be on the fire. Whatever the man and the woman decide to do in their bedroom, not the threesome now. The threesome, of course, you know, God never said Adam, Eve, and Sarah. It's only Adam and Eve, not Adam, Eve, and That's Sarah. True. Yeah. It's only Adam and Eve. I don't support threesome, but for sporting, it should be between husband and wife. But because it carries it, you know, different. Bible translation. I don't want to go deep into the word of God. When God told Israel through Solomon, he said, drink from thy sister. He said, he said, he told Israel, drink from thy sister. He said, and be round, right? Yeah. With, the, with her breast. Now, what has breast got to do with well? Come on. He's talking about yeah. how yeah. Yes. He said, drink from, it's your sister, it's your well. Drink from it. And be pleased with her breast. Be ravished with her breast. Not with another woman's system. Not with another woman's breast. So that's my intent. But I don't want to go deep into scriptures. But mm. concerning aura, mm, I don't know. It's between the man and the wife. Because another question that somebody said here, but Pastor V already clarified that what a man and his wife does in their bed that's is right. between them for their own pleasure mm -hmm. she said anal sex is not permissible no no so does that's that still thing. not that's have no. to do with what a man wants to do with his wife no that's just what i'm saying you see all things are lawful but it cannot be brought under the control when God created the vagina, there's a reason why God created the vagina. And there's a reason why God created the anus. The anus is to pass out waste. The waste of your body. <clears throat> now, you see why people that go through the anus, they suffer the anus disease. Yeah. Because there's a reason why God created the vagina. The reason why God created the vagina is for, 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 for the sperm to go through <laughs> the vagina. And for the vagina also <laughs> to be ready to bring forth that person. the vagina. <laughs> Enos cannot bring the baby. You know, I told you I'm wrong. You know, it's here and I'm very wrong. No, it's it's, it's, it's very good because Enos, it's all Enos, adults Enos, on here. Is adult, a, is, yes. a, a is for apple, B is for ball. Enos can never bring her baby. 
If Enos can bring baby, God, then God should have directed the pennies to go to the Enos. Enos is meant to bring shit and to fuck. You know, yes. I hope Americans know what is shit. Yes, shit yes. In Africa means boo boo. That yes. is what is meant for now. If you marry, that's convert you detour. Guess what? You also get the disease that come from the from the Enos. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. yes. And that's why you see a lot of HIVs and AIDS because we leave the natural use. And we begin to do another thing. So when we're talking about, you know, what a man and a woman agrees, we are talking about biblical way. Yes. We are not talking about worldly way. Because even the word, if they like, they can put it even in their ear or even yeah. pass it through the nose, yeah. which is not scriptural. So yeah. that's just my intake. Yep. Yeah. You know, to, to intention. To add to what Pastor Ezra just rightfully stated, it goes back to what we said at the beginning of this statement. We Sometimes we have our own personal desires, appetites, mm -hmm. things we want to try. Yeah. But the things you want to try is not permitted in God's cookbook. No. You see? So there's a, the, the, the anal sex is something that people want to try or do. Mm -hmm. But... We all know that the anal sex thing, it goes back that it is your your will. That's something you want to do. But Not when that. it comes to sex, even as believers, biblical speaking, the anal should not be touched. But once again, people have their things they want to try. And sometimes the things they want to try, anal sex is on their list. But it's, it's, it's something that is not declared of God. But it's your own personal you want to try it to see what other people are saying so yep. that's it right there yeah oh my goodness this is this sound is teaching. teaching yes i mean those who online are sending the comments through they're telling you thank you for addressing the questions they said this is sound teaching and indeed it is i mean this is so professional on every level when you have a lot of adults together they need to hear it the way they understand it because a lot of times, sometimes we become so holy for our people, and then the people lost their way because they're not mm -hmm. there, you mm -hmm. know. And then they're like, I don't know what Pastor talking about, but the other one, I don't know. no, they didn't understand. So I'm really, oh, I'm so, so thankful for yes. the questions that came and wow. the answers that were addressed to them. I, I even know what to say to you, but I am so thankful that when I was looking for speakers, you know, God is a good God. All the time. Oh, my God. All and he said, in all your ways, acknowledge him. Yes, that's right. And I pray, but who I'm going to bring here to enlighten these people mind spiritually? I don't just want to pick anybody and bring them here. And the next thing, we'll all be looking at and Okay, Pastor, did you just say that? Pastor, did you get you back in with the word of God? But you both, I mean, the epitome of clarity yeah, this, yes. on this topic for us. So thank you so much. I wish this 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 platform was so great. Somebody else say men will never graduate from kindergarten. <laughs> they will graduate. <laughs> they will graduate. They will graduate. <laughs> they will so graduate. One last question we're gonna take. The person say their new fiance says they don't want no sex before marriage, but she concerned. Do they know the assignment when they get to the bedroom? Should she take the chance and marry this person before knowing what the package is all about? That's a loaded one. Yeah, it's a loaded one. You know, one. since at the end, of the thing about it, she just she just stated it. Um, we're speaking about biblical guidelines, right? Yeah. I will use myself for an example. My husband and I never had sex before we got married. Um, I was in the world before I, I met my husband. So it wasn't like I was raised in church and I was some kind of a holier than thou. I came from the world. Mm -hmm. I came from the streets. So I, I, I was able to manifest in both the streets and Christ. But, and I'm just, because this is a real life platform. Yes. Because I've already had sex, not with my husband. But because I've already had sex in my past life, 
I knew the feeling of sex, how good it is. And to be honest with you, when I was getting ready to get married, one of my main concerns was sex. I said, God, will this man be able to please me? <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. One of my main concerns was sex because I like sex when I was in the world. So mm -hmm. here I, I'm leaving the world and I'm coming to Christ and I'm like, man, is this man going to be able to please me in bed? Because I know where the world can offer because I was able to test it. Yeah. But I had to come to a place where that if I wanted to do it, God's way. You know, marriage is very challenging. Marriage as, a, as Christians, marriage goes... will be able to defend okay. that marriage despite what happens yeah. so i knew that if i was going to have sex with my husband when crisis arrives in my marriage it was going to be challenging so i made a decision i said god you know and that's my honest prayer god i like sex this man i'm getting married to please he has to be able to please me and he he, he he's able to do that so to answer mm -hmm. our sister's question God doesn't need you. Like I said, it's a, it's, once again, according to scriptures, we are not supposed to have sex before marriage, according to scriptures. Mm -hmm. Not Veronica, not Esther, according to scriptures. So if you trust God with that marriage or the man you're going to marry, you don't need to try out his package. God knows you. Hello. God knows your desire. Yes. And God knows how to blend you two together. Hello. So if yes. you have a man that says, honey, let us not have sex before marriage. You should even be excited. Yeah. Because a lot of men in our generation, they will say we Don't must say that. we must come, we must start it today. So it's a blessing. Trust God to honor your marriage and whatever package you see in that bedroom, you will like it. God yeah. bless you. Pastor V, you know you said that, but there was this little uh clip on TikTok. The guy has been telling the girl that, you know, he wants to wait until the wedding day before they get married. So she's like, okay, and she was waiting. But on the day of the wedding, before they went into the church, he needed to go to the bathroom. So she like, but we're just going to get married today anyway. So the man went into the bathroom, and she sneaked there. And she said what she saw, she took off her shoes and she started to run. <laughs> she said the thing she saw. You saw as well as she cannot make it. <laughs> and guess what said this here? That is part of marriage. That one gets one night come here again. And you know, like Pastor Esther said, that's a very good question. Like Pastor Esther said, if you come into a situation where after you've decided to honor God and you that night you look at the thing, you say, I don't know what to do. There are other options. There are things you can do that will still allow you to enjoy your spouse, different things, things you can buy. There are all kinds of things out there to, to make your you. sex good, yeah, even with right. a small private part. That's God right. bless you. Thank you so <laughs> Thank much. You so that, much. That, that was so good. <laughs> well, Pastor, Esther, add, you wanted to say yeah, something? Yeah, to add to what Pastor Veronica said, yes, in that same book of 1 Corinthians chapter 7, you know, but Paul said, he will advise, man, keep your tom tom, woman, keep your vaji vaji until the day of the wedding. But if you born and you cross the flower, make sure you marry. It is true. So we say, you know, uh, no sex before marriage. But if in any case or in any situation you can't, and now you have broken the guest flower, but our Paul commands that you must marry the woman as it becomes a sin. Okay. Hmm. So, sex before marriage, no, according to the word of God. If it's yes, then Joseph would have been sleeping with Mary. But remember, yeah. God commands and God accepts. Uh, 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 courtship. Joseph and Mary were courting. She goes there, washes clothes, you know, help cook the food. Even spend the night, but they don't sleep in the same room. And then she goes back up until the angel of the Lord came. 
Now, I don't buy this idea of if I don't see it, I don't go. So how many men are you going to test? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's <laughs> how, how many uh, have you not become a tester? Mm. How many men are you going to test? But this is what I advise young ladies that come to me for counseling. And there's what we call how to identify, right? You don't need to test that man to tell to know the size of his. Mm -hmm. you know, I will give you there's a book, but I don't I, I mean if you're interested, give me a call and I will give you the book. But mm -hmm. I will give you a very short answer. Look at the size of the nose, the size of the mouth, and the size of the man's palm. If yes, the sir. palm is nega nega, right? <laughs> and the nose is Oh, you're laughing. The nose is not going to get the mouth is very small. And you know, right? You like them big. Don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. We are, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I, I'm telling you what I, I give out. The money. Now, if you know you like them big, and God, and you have prayed to God. Listen, yeah. everything is by prayer. No yeah. prayer cannot do. Yeah. Yeah. Veronica. She prayed to God. God answered. So, whoever is on this platform tonight, don't go testing. You are not a tester. What if while you are testing, you go and test HIV, test AIDS, mm -hmm. test gonorrhea? Yeah. You don't even know. And now the right man comes already. You have tested so many things. Now all your <laughs> body is full of disease. So yes. you not give it to the innocent man. So instead of that, pray. There is nothing prayer cannot do. Mm -hmm. Ask for prayer. Yeah. Give me the right man. And what God is giving you, He has also given us men and women who have written the book signs to watch the size of a manhood or the size of a womanhood. Just looking at it, you should be able to know. And I think pastors, we need to teach our congregation, especially the youth yes. in yes. our ministry. We yes. need to teach them. Don't go sizing. Don't go, you know, testing. You want big one, then be praying for God with, <laughs> with a big mouth. Big hair, big, big nose, nose, and big mouth. Big mouth. I'm just giving you <laughs> example. You know, and that way, you'll be able to say, Father, I think that it is the right man. Yes. You know, and the woman, mom, too. You want the look for though if you go and get a woman with a small mouth, then you know she is very shallow. So, and you have this big thing when you go into the marriage, will not be sweet because it will be too shallow. The woman will always be in pain. So, these are signs we need to look for. But if we educate our congregation, especially the youth, I see no reason why they should make mistakes. Amen. So true, so true. So true. So, oh my God, we are, time is so far spent and this topic is so juicy, but it, it goes in series. So today is just the first part of it, God intention for sex. And from the way you have broken this thing down, we are on fire already. We want to beg your indulgence to please come back for human understanding of sex and as God, God intended. intended. Which will be next week. Which will be next Friday because you ladies are too fiery up for us. We, we can't handle, we need more. But we don't want to keep y'all more than what is recommended. So it has been a blessing. It has been a blessing. Somebody is asking another question, but this question was already covered. She said, if a relationship, if you are in a relationship with a man who is not God-fearing, can you tell him to wait until marriage? Die your prayer line. Go pray. That God will speak to this man's heart also. That's, That's right. Or concerning that question. So we are right. so thankful. We are so grateful for all the information. Please, if you're looking for big, look for big hands, big nose, and big, big mouth. mouth. Wide lips. Your look. If you see a, you're not one on one, go look for small nose, small mouth, and small and, hands. And yeah, tiny hands. Fine. Don't come <laughs> back here and make prayer point. You have gotten the key to go find. If you're not married, listen. Wisdom helps. Yeah, the Bible yeah. says, for the lack of knowledge, my people perish. Yes, That's right. You've been getting wisdom here tonight. So please take it and continue your journey of search. Now you got a tool to empower you. That's so right. when you go looking, you know what to look for. And please don't get on that table and tell that man at the first date, no, your hands is too small. Your mouth is too small. Your nose is too small. I can't make it. Please. You know, you, there's a way to decline and yes. it's not hurt. Because there's a woman who's looking for the small one. That's Why you're looking for the big one. The big so one. maybe you are not the one for him. That's right. So that person for that person will meet that person. Exactly. You know, 
We see a lot of things in life, and that's what makes God beautiful. You can see a tall man with a very short woman. In your mind, you wonder, how do it make it? But God is faithful. It makes it. That's right. Having children. Yeah. So we know God is faithful. He, is right. family, he just makes everything new. Yes. So please, our pastors have educated us tonight. Do take this information and use it wisely. Do not go about playing around. You know what is sin. You know what is sin. Yeah. So if you know it and you engage in it, you're giving yourself over to Romans 1, 21 to 28. You'll be That's giving right. over to your vile desires. So please don't come back here and say we should fast 14 days for you. We're not fast for you. You will do that fasting by yourself. But oh, Pastor V, thank you so much for this evening. Mm -hmm. And we look forward to seeing you next Friday next week, yeah, on definitely. the next part. Pastor yeah. Esther, we are so grateful for you tonight. And yes. we look forward to seeing you on the next next week, well. next week on the next episode. I mean, this mm -hmm. has been, this is this it's just been, been eye opening. It has I just love the openness. Yes. There was no spiritual thing here. This was life. You talk about life the way life is, and that is highly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you so Thank you. much tonight. You know, Pastor like, Veronica, how are you? I'm I fine. I met you in Ohio, right? Yes, many, many oh years ago. I yes. think I had your number. I will. Can you, Sister Stephen, can you please give it to her for me? I Sister, will you. definitely. Oh, yes. give it. I definitely. thought I had your number. I remember definitely. I met you twice in uh, Columbus. In Ohio, Ohio right? yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Yes. Pleasure yes. seeing you. So she will oh, give me your you. number. Yes, yeah, she will give it to you for me. All okay. right, then. We just thank want to you. say thank you. This has been a fruitfully fulfilling, <sighs> you know, topic. As this, uh, Pastor Veronica said, this is a real talk platform. We try to, to educate. We try to bring real topics that we can all learn from, you know. Sure. And um, please, what you should take away from this is don't be a tester. And I just pulled up a, um, a statistical chart that says that if you've slept with one person, you've slept with one person. If you slept with two men, you slept with three. Mm -hmm. Three people, you slept with seven. If you slept mm. with four people, you have slept with 15 people and it goes mm -hmm. on. Five is 31 people you slept Ooh, with. Wait. Six, you slept with 63 different people. Hope so jump. just, <laughs> please be safe Yes. and be careful. Yes. Don't be a tester. Please. Thank you. We've given you All the right. keys. Go find those big nose, small nose, big hands, small hands. And, and don't and don't go to a party and begin to look at other people. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bye bye. So much. Bye -bye. <laughs> bye -bye. Good night, Pastor Esther. Good night, Pastor Veronica. Wow, this... So thanks so much to the audience tonight. Wow. Chocopi, Isabella, Pamela, Philip, Macapo, Annie, uh, uh, oh, geez, uh, Sally, Linda, uh, Trinian, oh my goodness, Shawa, oh my God, and the list go on Liz, uh, 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 Margaret, Maria, Caddy. Oh, Helena. Oh, my goodness. I'm not going to finish tonight. But thank you all for watching tonight. Hope you took away something from tonight. We will see you next Friday. The topic for next Friday is human understanding of sex as God intended. Yes. So get your questions. Put it together. Whatever platform you put your questions on, we can see it and we can relate it to the show. But if you want to join into the show... Of Please, course, and free. always, my number, normally I'll put it on the show for you so that you can call in and be a part of the show. Ask your question live. Say it the way you intend it to come out so you can get the answer that you're looking for. So thank you all tonight for watching, and please be blessed. Thank God. It's, it's fabulous. fabulous. And it is a fabulous it, it day It was today. a fabulous day. Have so a good have night. A good weekend. Good night. Good night.